Hello there, welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to talk about the Phantom 3 batteries. Now there are two batteries with the Phantom 3. You've got the one that's built in the controller and your intelligent flight battery. Now there's a couple of things I want to discuss which will just help you maintain the life of both these batteries. They are expensive and the more you look after them the longer they will last. Looking at the intelligent flight battery, it looks very similar to the battery in the Phantom 2. It is different. This time it is a four cell battery. The Phantom 2 used a three cell battery, so this is a higher voltage battery. What that means is you cannot use the battery from your Phantom 2 in your Phantom 3. It also means you can't use the charger from the Phantom 2 with the Phantom 3. So just make sure you are using the correct charger for the correct battery. As you can see, it's got the level indicators on the back which shows us the current battery level. Now there are a few things they recommend for looking after these batteries. As with all LiPo batteries, um, if they are abused they do not like it and they won't last very long at all. There is some stuff you can do to make this battery give you the maximum for performance for the longest period of time. The first thing is with any LiPo they do not like being left fully charged. So if you charge your battery 100% do not leave it for long periods of time sitting at that voltage. Um, if you've charged it and you're not going to use it, discharge it before putting it away. Now DJI have incorporated a self discharge feature into this intelligent battery so it will actually discharge itself if you leave it. It's a bit of a backup really if you forget to do it. Personally I will not leave a LiPo battery fully charged for more than 24 hours. If I've charged it and I don't get a chance to fly today and I think I am going to fly tomorrow I would leave it for then. If I don't think I'm going to fly for another two days what I would actually then do is discharge it down to 80% and then top it back up to 100% before I fly it. If I wasn't going to fly it for another week, I would actually discharge the battery down to about 50%. DJI recommend for long term storage between 35 and 50% charge to store the battery. Now, if you do forget to do it, they have built in a feature to self-discharge after a period of time. So between 1 and 10 days, depending on what you set it to in the app, the battery will discharge itself down to below 65%. Now, when it does this, there are a few things to watch. It will give off some heat. So make sure when you put your battery away, don't put it anywhere where there's no air tighten a bag in its case, make sure the battery is left out, it can breathe and there's plenty of air around it. Personally I always discharge them before that feature kicks in so I've set mine to three days so my battery will discharge after three days down to 65%. So as I said if I'm going to fly now in the next two days I'll bring it down to 80% and then top it off. If I'm not going to fly for a week I'll actually bring it down to the 50%. Um, a couple of other things with these batteries is DJI recommend exercising the cells after a number of charges. So once you've charged your battery 20 times and you've fully charged it and then flown it down to say 20% and then fully charged it again and then flown it down to 30%, every 20 charges they recommend discharging the battery down to 8% then fully recharging it again. Now, if you do do this, the best way is fly it down to maybe a low level, 15%. Take it home, put it in the Phantom, turn the Phantom on and just leave it on the desk. Keep an eye on it on the app, let it get down to 80% and then 8%, sorry, and then turn it off. Once it's done that, leave it rest for about half an hour. Don't recharge it straight away. Lipos do not like being charged straight after being discharged. The cells need a bit of rest in time for the voltages to settle. So when you've taken the battery down, and this is stands for when you're flying in the field as well, if you've got multiple batteries and you've got a portable charger, 
give the battery chance to rest before recharging it. It will help extend the life of your Phantom 3 battery. But take it down to 88% as I was saying earlier. Leave it settle for 20 minutes and then fully charge it back up to 100%. What that will do is help calibrate the battery electronics, the circuit in the battery, and it will also help exercise the cells. Then, if you're not going to use it then, drain it back down to either 80% if you're going to use it in a couple of days, or take it down to the 50% if you're going to put it into storage for a bit of time. Now, the Phantom 3 controller also has a battery in. Now, this battery is non-removable. We know that. Um, DJI actually haven't made any recommendations in the manual about looking after the battery in the controller. But it is a LiPo, it is 4S, so the same rules apply, basically. Although it is a smaller C-rating battery, what that means is we will have a bit more room for error, but the same rules do apply. So I would not be leaving it fully charged for more than, say, a week or 10 days on this battery. If you're going to use it in the next week, that'll be fine. If you're going to use it in maybe 10, 15 days, I would leave it on and take it down to about 80, 75, 80%. If you're going to put it into storage for a long period of time, again, discharge it down to 35 to 50%. Don't leave it charged for long periods of time at full capacity. The lipo cells can swell and it can give reducing capacity and it means then you'd have to have a new battery in your controller it doesn't look very easy to change i'm guessing it's got to go back to G dji for that to happen so again although they've not made any recommendations on the controller the same rules would apply as they would for the flight battery what i'm going to do now is actually show you how to check a couple of things on the battery so we'll put the battery in the phantom 3 we'll turn on the app and what I'm going to do then is move over to a screen recording and show you exactly what we're doing. So what we're going to do first is open the DJ app. We're sitting there, we're going to turn the controller on. The, the app will now connect to the controller. There we go, we've got the no signal at the top, so we now know the app is connected to the controller. I'm going to turn the Phantom 3 on. And we're going to wait now for it to connect. And we're going to look at the battery levels on the remote controller and the Phantom 3 and a couple of other things. First thing we're going to look at is the quick levels. So if we tap the safe to fly at the top, it'll give us our aircraft status screen. In here, you'll have your aircraft battery level, 31%. It's also displayed in the top right-hand corner. The aircraft battery temperature, 23 degrees. And the RC battery, you can see we're currently down to 48%. If you now tap on the battery percentage meter in the corner, it'll bring up the aircraft battery display. Now, a couple of things in here. You will see the voltage at 15 volt, the remaining power, and the total capacity, the temperature, the cell voltages, as you can see, they're all balanced lovely. And there's a little option here called battery life. Now what that is, is that is how much of the total capacity of the battery is available to use. So as time goes on and you use your battery, its overall capacity will actually reduce. So at the moment, we can use 100% of that battery's capacity when it's fully charged. After maybe 50 uses, that might go down to 95%. So we will only be able to use 95% of the battery's total capacity. So as the battery gets older, you'll see the battery life reduce down in percentage. As it gets low, once you get down to sort of 50%, the battery is only going to be lasting half the time it did before. It's time for a new battery. If you look at the bottom, there's time to discharge option, and it currently says seven days. That is the amount of time we set the battery to discharge itself if it's been left fully charged. So if we tap on it, you can see we can set between one and 10 days. I personally have mine set to two days. So 
if I accidentally leave the battery fully charged, it will discharge itself down to below 65% in two, after two days by itself. Now that actually will take approximately two days to do. DJI State to go from 100% down to 65% will take about two days. As I said earlier, when it is doing it, it will actually give off some heat. So make sure the battery is not enclosed in a tight bag or in a box. Make sure when you store your battery, you store it in a nice safe place where there's plenty of airflow around the battery, not in direct sunlight, no way the battery will get any form of direct heat. You want a cool place, somewhere nice and cool for the battery. And that's it. So I hope I've been able to help everyone a little bit with this. Um, so looking after your flight battery, don't leave it fully charged for more than a few days. If you're going to use it in a few days and it's 100%, take it down to say 80% and then top it off before you use it. If you're not going to use it for another week, take it down to 50% and leave it at 50% and charge it before you use it. The same rules again for the handset, but you can stretch the time out a little bit. So on the handset, if you're not going to use it for sort of 7 to 10 days, I would bring it down to at least 80% maybe a bit lower. If you're not going to use it for maybe a couple of weeks, leave it at 50%. Don't leave it at 80, leave it at 50. Every 20 flights and every 20 charges, take the battery down to 8%, let it rest, then fully recharge it again. And what that will do is calibrate the battery meter and exercise the cells. And that should give you the absolute best battery life you can possibly get out of these batteries. Thank you very much.